Hello and welcome to City Edition, the City of Bend's video news magazine. I'm Justin Feinstone. The city will hold public hearings soon on the revised urban growth boundary proposal. It's a document that's taken five years of hard work by both the community and staff to produce. Take a look. In 2010, the state of Oregon rejected our UGB proposal. And since then, uh, we've done a variety of different things to try to move the project forward. Uh, most importantly, in the last year and a half, uh, we've been working with three advisory committees, our steering committee, and we are very close to finishing the project this June. And we had to follow the directions of the state, particularly regarding density. That was the main issue that they have. And so what we did was we took a more accurate inventory of the land that was available inside the urban growth boundary. And then we appointed three committees, one on business land, one on residential land, and one on the boundary itself. And all three of these then reported up to a steering committee composed of our city council, a planning, two planning commissioners, and a county commissioner. I was on the urban growth boundary boundary committee, uh, one of the three committees that the city appointed. And we were charged with looking at boundary analysis outside the urban growth boundary. But a very important component of this process is to look within the urban growth boundary to see whether we could use existing properties, redevelop properties, and, and make some of the inventory available so we don't have to expand as far. So you can see behind me, um, a good example of that is what used to be the former crane shed site, which is now being redeveloped and it's going to be a hotel. You know, Bend is an old mill town and we've been changing and growing and there are certain parts of town that really aren't vital and have sort of grown out of use. I'm thinking of the area along 3rd Street, for instance. It's really important too as we grow that we have vital centers throughout our city and not just, obviously the downtown's important, but not just our downtown or certain areas. And we're beginning to grow and put together a strong plan for all parts of our city. The original proposal was for over 8,400 acres. The current proposal is for over 2,100 acres, about 940 acres for residential, over 800 for employment uses, and 400 for civic uses like parks and schools. And the, the most, I think, interesting piece of this outside of the size is that it's being distributed in what are called complete communities. So we ended up with a segment of land all the way around the existing city. Uh, at the north end between Obi Riley and Highway 20, in the, the northeast quadrant, uh, a large chunk of land in the southwest, um, and directly south uh, along Highway 97, and then some properties along the west side just past Northwest Crossing and a little bit to the north. Overall, yes, I am happy with this plan. Personally, I think it's a good idea. Uh, so, uh, some people may not like these changes. There are gonna be changes. The city's gonna feel a little bit more crowded. It's going to have a more urban feel to it, especially the central part of the city. This time, our urban growth boundary extension process has been much more data-driven. We've worked with a lot more citizens, and it's based on growing inside our urban growth boundary as well as growing outside our urban growth boundary. This means that we use the land within the urban growth boundary much more effectively. So the future from here on the project looks like this. We have a number of, these are all public meetings, by the way. We have public advisory committee meetings, a series coming up in uh, March with our three advisory committees, one with our steering committee in April, and we have formal public hearings uh, in early June. I expect those, uh, those meetings to wrap up in June to July, and then the proposal will go to the state for their review.